In yesterday's video, we took a look at the 6600 XT and we put it with an 8400T and then we undervolted both the CPU and the GPU with the goal rated power supply to see how low the power consumption could go when we were gaming. And then this got me thinking, what about the RTX 3060? And more importantly, how would it compare against the 6600 XT in terms of low power consumption gaming? Well, in today's comparison, we are going to be coupling it with that six core, six threaded CPU instead of coupling it with an 11900K or a 5950X, which let's face it, a lot of people buying these graphics cards aren't even coupling it with those types of CPUs. So let's take a look at which one of these two is the efficiency king, but also see how much you can drop your temperatures and your fan speeds. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their Z590 Phantom Gaming Velocitum motherboard featuring PCIe 4.0 M.2 support as well as a 3cm personalized MOS fan covering the 14 phase VRM for overclocking. And lastly, if you're a gamer, you've got dedicated lightning game ports which allow you to separate the latency of your keyboard and mouse on separate controllers. Links in the description below to find out more. Let's get straight into these gaming numbers where we tested five different games at 1080p. However, I'm gonna be pulling up two sets of results. One is the out of the box settings for the whole system. And then the other is the tuned system on both fronts, meaning we lowered the voltages and slightly lowered the clock speeds on both the RTX 3060 and the RX 6600 XT. And then we also tuned the DRAM as well as the CPU. And what we found here was with, for instance, PUBG, we got a slight drop in performance on both the RTX 3060 and the 6600 XT, but pulling up those wattage numbers, we could see a massive drop on both fronts. Here, the RTX 3060 went from 238 watts down to 164 watts. And then on AMD's side of the camp, it went from 217 watts down to 138. So the RTX 3060, at least in PUBG, was losing out to the 6600 XT when it came to pure efficiency in relation to gaming. Now the FPS numbers in PUBG between these two graphics cards was pretty similar, but we'll pull up another example here. And this is F1 2020, where we had here at 1080p ultra settings, a victory for the 6600 XT out of the box. And then when we tuned both these graphics cards, we saw pretty similar numbers in terms of FPS, but the AMD card was winning out in terms of its actual raw wattage numbers from the wall, where we saw a drop on the RTX 3060 going from 239 watts down to 157 watts. But then on the AMD side of the fence, we saw 224 all the way down to 132. So beating out the RTX 3060, at least in PUBG and F1 2020, by around 25 to 30 watts. Then the next title we're gonna pull up is Apex Legends. And this has a bit of a curveball thrown into the mix. Where at least with the wattage numbers, we went on the RTX 3060, we saw a drop from 229 watts from the wall all the way down to 154 watts. And then on the AMD side of the fence, we saw a massive drop even bigger than that of the Nvidia side. And then what we saw with the average FPS followed a similar trend to that of PUBG and F1 2020. But here's where we saw the biggest difference and this had to do with the 0.1% lows. And in fact, they were heavily in favor of the NVIDIA RTX 3060, where the NVIDIA card saw the 0.1% lows consistently higher and pretty much double that of the RX 6600 XT. And now if you were to ask me why is this happening, at least only in Apex Legends, the answer I'd have to give would just be simply due to driver optimizations, where I'm guessing NVIDIA have spent a lot more time with the RTX 3000 series, or in particular the 3060, versus AMD with the RX 6600 XT. Being a relatively new graphics card out on the market, in the case of the 6600 XT, perhaps AMD haven't had enough time to optimize this card for this game to get the 0.1% lows as smooth as NVIDIA. Now the next two titles I'm going to pull up here for you are CSGO and Dota 2. And now I threw them in the mix in yesterday's video, but I wanted to see what they did on Nvidia's side, where these two titles, even at max settings at 1080p, weren't stressing the graphics card at 100%. And here's where in Dota 2, we saw out of the box 150 watts, that went down to 122 watts after undervolting and tuning, and the FPS actually went up on the Nvidia side, just like it did on the AMD side, meaning that we did need a bit more CPU performance to get the FPS higher in this title. And just like the AMD graphics card, it followed a similar trend. However, the 6600 XT did edge it out in lower power consumption 
in Dota 2, just like it has done with the other three titles. Though the last title we're going to pull up is CSGO, where we saw a victory in terms of NVIDIA's performance, scoring 239 FPS and 236 respectively, and then we saw a drop from 148 watts down to 130 watts. So this was the most minimal difference I saw on the NVIDIA side, as opposed to the AMD side, where Dota 2 actually ended up being the smallest difference in power in terms of an increase in power efficiency. So after testing out those five games, I can make the conclusion that the 6600 XT is a more efficient graphics card in terms of raw gaming performance versus the watts it's going to pull from the wall. Though in my opinion, the winner here is the process of undervolting and tuning your graphics cards, where both these cards saw a huge reduction in both power consumption, and here's the next thing I'm gonna pull up for you, the temperatures as well as the fan speeds, which will subsequently lead to the noise. Here on the AMD side of the fence, we saw 70 degrees down to 55 degrees, and the fan speeds went from 40% to an automatic tuning of 33%. Then on NVIDIA's camp, we went from 68 degrees with a 42% fan speed down to 57 degrees, and a fan speed of 30%. So actually quite similar on both sides where we saw a temperature drop of over 10 degrees. And as a result of that, we subsequently saw the fan speeds and noise also drop. So what this means is, especially if you get ridiculously hot summers, this is gonna mean that the card is going to run cooler and it's gonna be quieter, but also you are going to extend the life of your components, especially your graphics card by doing this, which is a used PC parts enthusiast. I personally love it when I buy stuff off people and they've taken care of it. And in fact, I'll even pay a little bit more money if I see the condition of that graphics card versus saying a card that has a lot of oxidization and it looks like it hasn't been taken care of. Anyhow, before I hit the road and get on out of here, I wanted to pull up some Fire Strike Extreme scores where we've got here the CPU scores on both. I'll just do a head-to-head -head comparison across the three different metrics. And that was the CPU was burning up a little bit more power under the Nvidia side but scoring a pretty similar score, both before and after the tune. Then on the direct GPU test, the AMD RX 6600 XT did come in with a sizable victory and then also scored better power efficiency than the RTX 3060. And then the combined scores actually came in with a pretty similar level of power consumption and the score was in favor of the 6600 XT. So up until this point, if we were to look at things objectively, the 6600 XT does look like it is becoming the better buy than the RTX 3060. However, there are some augmented benefits that the RTX 3060 does have over the 6600 XT. First of those being 12 gigabytes of VRAM versus eight gigabytes does have a bigger frame buffer. And then the next being it does carry the DLSS 2.0 support, which does work very well in some of the titles that support it. And then lastly, you do get better ray tracing on the NVIDIA counterpart as opposed to the AMD counterpart. Though how much those other benefits are worth it to you depends on you and of course, what games you play. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below, did you enjoy today's video? Though in terms of the pricing of both these cards as it stands, they both carry a hefty price tag due to crypto mining still being in season and still being quite profitable. So as long as the crypto mining profits are high, then the graphics card prices unfortunately are going to remain high. So if you're a true gamer, then you can join me every night in prayer and we can hope for a crypto crash together and with that aside if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content and you want to see the moment it drops then be sure to hit that sub button ring that bell and i'll catch you in the next one peace out for now bye